think it's gotta be it's day 68. Um, I feel totally empowered. Um, I yesterday was feeling a victim. You know, Miranda doesn't understand me, and it's not fair, and I've been in this clinic for so long. And, you know, I just, the reasons kept coming why I'm a victim and, and so right and have been so wronged. And, you know, no one else has come without breaks. I have not had a single day off. Everyone, Andy took four days off. Uh, Renee took, you know, three days off. Sky has taken weeks off at a time. Leticia felt bad. She took days off. I mean, everyone took days off. Everyone, everyone, everyone. And I am the only one that I know of. Um, and a lot, most people I'm mentioning have been around half as much time as I have. So most people mentioning, um, you know, everyone take day off. I have not missed a single clinic day. And I'm late a lot because I'm on the bathroom because I'm taking Kayam Chorna for you know, a month. And all these reasons, you know, why it is not fair that she, you know, got mad at me or whatever. And then today, on the way to class, I said... You know what, Gabby? You just get through these nine classes. And I said, you know what? No, you're not a victim. It is an honor to be here. It is an honor to work with them. They are amazing. Miranda is the psychologist of like 30 people at a time. Um, she used to deal with all these different personality types. Everyone in a different place. You know, people are breaking down, crying every, every to left and right. You know, you can handle this. You know, the first many weeks. I would say the first six weeks. Um, Miranda was was on top of me. How are you? How are you doing? How are you feeling? She would call me. We'd have our weekly talk. I mean, she was there, and then she saw I was strong enough, and she backed off and gave her attention to keep other people who needed it. And, and I was strong enough, and I and I was at a good place. And now, if I've fallen again, you know, I realize like she put me in place because I need to be put in place because I somehow fell into some pecking order, like I'm. I'm mad, like why is everyone else going to the more advanced class and I'm still here? Like everyone comes into the 9.30 class and then moves to the 7.30 class. And people who are in less shape than me or less able to do exercise than me and they're moving on and I'm still here. And there was something mad in me that said, why don't you guys let me progress? Or what's wrong with me? Am I not good enough? Is my case more serious than theirs? And you know, when you compare yourself to others, it's always gonna end up a fucked up solution, a fucked up conclusion. And I shouldn't, but I did. And I think I was mad, so I was creating like a pecking order. Like, uh, I'm, I'm the boss here, I'm, I'm the queen. Uh, Sky and I are queens, we've been around the longest. So I wanted to laugh or, or get attention to me or something that makes me make sort of a statement that says, this is my realm, you know, welcome to my class, I'm thinking. And anyway, on the way to class, I did a shift, and I, you know, I'm reading the Seven Healing Chakras by Brenda Davies, and I'm still on my solar plexus. I got a lot of work on my solar plexus, and and one of the things she talks about is putting your hand on the solar plexus and say, "I am the power. I choose what will happen in my life. I am the power. I make decisions. I am the power. I have the strength to overcome anything. I am the power. Um, my life belongs to me. I am the power. I am responsible for my my life. I am the power." And then she lets it out. And as I was driving to the clinic, I started doing my I am the power mantras. And, uh, yeah. And I got there and I said, I am the power. I can be focused. I can control my the amount of noise I make. I can be conscious of the fact that we want a quiet environment that everyone can concentrate in. I can, I can go through this in a mature and empowered way and not as a hurt child or a tenter tantrum. And then early in the class, Miranda came up to me and said something and I felt myself like wanting to get into an emotional energy dramatic with her. And I was like, she's like, how are you? And I said, well, I'm here, you know. <laughs> and then she backed off. And then later she really came to me and said, better, you're concentrating. I see you can do this. You look really good. I see your body extending. Like she kept... You know, because I withdrew my energy. I stopped being in a place of, I hope you like me. I want everyone to like me. I want Miranda to approve of me. I want, you know, Meringue to like me. And I just went, I mean, you know what? I'm here for me. And I'm not, I'm not getting into these dynamics. And as soon as I cut them, you know, then, then others could come to me and say, you know, are we okay? I guess. So I needed that slap, and I needed that, and now I'm full power back on, almost considering adding that last day. Um, I don't think I should. It would be stressful. But I'm, I'm back. I'm full power on. I'm full power. Uh, yeah, feels good. 
So I'm getting ready. I'm going to shower and get ready and go to Paradise School where I'm giving a, a workshop for kids and then for their parents. And I'm excited. I'm starting cons consultation with the school on emotional intelligence and how to create a curriculum. Well, this is, we're going to start with this talk and then um, the goal is to help them create a curriculum based on emotional intelligence and really help these kids develop their more the morality, their emotional health, their ability to communicate in a healthy way, to love themselves. Really build a curriculum that will help them in a holistic way be the best light-filled people they can be. So I'm excited. Feels good. Feels really good to not step into victim and to just to, to see it and then jump right out of it and say, no, I'm strong, I'm powered. I'm empowered, I can do this, and it feels awesome. And I felt my body actually did a lot more today because I was really focused on that. So, Namaste.